Greetings everyone, it's Year Peacekeeper coming at you with the next video in our How to Play series on the Japanese cruiser line. This is the Tier 5 Furutaka Class Heavy Cruisers. The Furutaka Class Heavy Cruisers were Japan's first set of high-speed heavy cruisers designed to counter the U.S. Navy's Omaha Class Light Scout Cruisers and the Royal Navy's Hawkins Class Heavy Cruisers. Two ships were built in 1922, with Kakao actually having her hull laid before Furutaka, but Furutaka was finished and commissioned first. The Furutaka class consisted of some revolutionary design features for her time. Her flush deck made for a much stronger hull, the flush deck being her deck is all on one level, there are no steps in her main deck. This made the ship much stronger, and it allowed for the deck armor as well as the belt armor to be a part of the ship's structure, which saved additional weight and allowed them to use that weight for other things. However, it didn't save enough weight because these ships were both overweight at launch. In fact, they were criticized for their crew complements not having proper ventilation because the lower crew quarters in the ship, the portholes for the, you know, to help with ventilation sat so close to the water that they actually had to be closed when the ship was underway because it would allow water into the ship. Obviously, that's not good for your crew. <laughs> oh, boy. Both ships did receive extensive modernizations, though, in the 1930s. Their original 3-inch anti-aircraft guns were replaced with four 12-centimeter electro-hydraulically actuated guns and their fire control directors. Those did serve as anti-aircraft guns, and you can actually see them here. One, there's two on each side here. They're in single turrets. They also received extensive upgrade to their light anti-aircraft armament as well, with the eight 25mm guns in four twin mounts being added as well. The biggest change, though, was due to, to the primary armament. At launch, these ships had six single 8-inch gun mounts, as we see in the stock hole and the second upgrade, or the first upgrade hole of the ships. Their final hole configuration has three twin 8-inch gun turrets, and this was actually their final configuration and the, the configuration in which they sank in. And this actually made them significantly better ships overall because we now had the ability to fire four barrels forward and two to the rear fairly easily. Engines were also replaced during these modernizations. They removed the mixed coal oil boilers and went purely to oil-fired boilers, which you know, increased power somewhat, and they needed it because they added some additional weight, and to help prevent this ship from sinking even further into the water, they added torpedo bulges to add some width and added displacement to keep the ship from sinking too low in the water and killing their top speed and fuel efficiency. In terms of service history, both ships participated in the invasion of Guam and the failed first invasion of Wake Island. They'd go on to be based out of Truck Lagoon, and from there, they would go on to support Japanese troop landings in a number of islands in the Solomons and Philippines. From there, they both fought in the Battle of Coral Sea the Battle of, and the Battle of Savo Island. There, they fired upon several U.S. ships and assisted in their sinking. Neither ship would be damaged during these battles. However, upon returning to base, the USS S-44, a S-44 submarine... <laughs> an S-class submarine. These things are tiny, by the way. I mean, really tiny. Uh, fired a single Mark 10, uh, sorry, fired four Mark 10 torpedoes at Kakao and struck her three times on her starboard side and ultimately sank her. Uh, they contributed her sinking and quick sinking due to the fact that the ships were leaving the battle. They had basically opened up all the portholes in it, and when the ship started taking on water, obviously they started taking on water from every porthole configuration, which, you know, was a, a big damage control fault on their part. Furutaka would go on to fight in the Battle of Cape Esperance, but shell and torpedo fire from the Gleaves-class destroyer USS Duncan actually would sink her. The detonation of Furutaka's Type 93 Long Lance torpedoes is listed as being a contributing factor to the sinking of the cruiser. 
In terms of their in-game play style, Furutaka is the first 8-inch gun cruiser a player will get their hands on out of any of the cruiser lines currently in the game. At Tier 5, she has the heaviest guns of any cruiser and performs remarkably similar to Alba at Tier 6. She is quite capable of dancing between torpedoes or incoming shell fire, as it may be, thanks to a fast rudder shift time and a tight turning radius. Her guns offer both potent HE and potent AP, thanks to having the only 8-inch guns at Tier 5, and she can overmatch a fair number of cruiser bows at that tier and even above at Tier 6, which means that you can get bow on citadels if you can get the guns to cooperate in the accuracy department. She also boasts 10-kilometer torpedoes, which are surprisingly useful and do fantastic damage. They also have some really good torpedo arcs, launching arcs, which means that they can be used to launch at targets in, in a what I would call a charge torping fashion, where you basically are charging at a enemy ship, and you can launch them forward. I mean, pretty far forward, too. We'll see that in the battle video. Her biggest downside is that she is limited in her main battery range compared to some of the other Tier 5 cruisers like Omaha and Kirov, which have over 15 kilometers in main battery range, Furutaka boasting a rather short 13.9 kilometers, mostly to balance out the fact that she's the only cruiser at this tier that has 8-inch guns. All right, let's 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 go over some stats. She has 30,700 hit points, 105 millimeters of armor at its thickest, which is going to be... Whoa, where is that? I'm guessing that is hidden underneath of our torpedo bulges here. I don't think I'm going to be able to show that quite easily. Ah, it's actually the transverse bulkhead here. Okay, so she has 105 millimeters of armor. Uh, her belt is 76 millimeters. In terms of torpedo damage reduction, she does have a TDS value of 4%, owing to those torpedo bulges that were added on in her later 1930s refits. Her main battery consists of six 8-inch guns. They are mounted in the final hole upgrade in three twin turrets. You've got two up front and a super firing pair, which just means that the rear one can fire over the front one. And then one single uh, dual turret in the back. And she does have secondary armament, those 120mm guns. There are four of them on the ship, two per side. They uh, have a main battery firing range of 4.2 kilometers. Really not all that useful. You're probably not going to find yourself getting into range to use those too terribly often. That main battery, though, does have that 13.9 kilometer t uh, max range. 15 second reload time, which is a bit slow. 21% fire chance. 4,700 AP shell damage and 3,300 HE shell damage. And at this tier, man, that damage roll, those damage rolls definitely add up. She does have torpedoes. She has a total of eight torpedoes and two quad launchers. They are mounted here at the aft end of the ship. They have a 10 kilometer range, 59 knot top speed, 16,267 damage, and a one and a half kilometer detection range. 94 second reload makes them not really a primary armament, but they are certainly situationally useful. And with a 10 kilometer range, you can actually uh, shut down some areas of travel quite easily with them if you do drive bys through the area. We'll see a little bit of that in the battle video. In terms of any aircraft defense, like all the Japanese cruisers at the lower tiers, it's basically non existent. She does have two twin 13 millimeter guns. She has those four dual 25 millimeter guns, as well as those four 120 millimeter guns and single mounts. And her AA circle starts out at 4.5K and works her way in. She does have a fighter, a uh, uh, float plane fighter, which can be used to cause panic because she does not have the defensive fire consumable. But uh, that, that catapult fighter is definitely useful. Max speed, 34 and a half knots, 750 meter turning radius, and 5.7 second rudder shift time. Her detection range by sea is 11.9 kilometers, and that's going to be without our concealment expert on our captain. With that, it drops down to 10 point, basically 5 kilometers. Um, really not too shabby for a cruiser, however, that only gives you about, uh, you know... Three and a half kilometer firing range there, you know, before you get detected. You can 
you can get three and a half K from your, your max range when you fire your guns. It's really not, she's really not that stealthy of a ship. So I personally don't think stealth is her primary attribute. Seven kilometer detection range by air though. Let's talk about some upgrades. Main armaments mod one is still going to be my recommendation here in this first slot for the 20% reduction in the chance of your main battery and torpedo tubes being incapacitated, 50% increase in their hit points, as well as 20% reduction in the time it takes to repair them. Auxiliary Armaments Mod 1 still isn't all that useful. We don't have a whole lot of AA guns or secondaries here that would be useful to double their hit point pool with. And at this tier, there are better ships for those AA duties and secondary brawling duties. So we're not really terribly worried about it. Magazine Mod 1 if you want, but personally, I think Main Armaments Mod 1 is the best choice at this tier. In the second slot, there are really... Two that I see as being viable, I'm choosing Aiming Systems Mod 1 for the 7% reduction in the dispersion of your main battery and the 20% increase in torpedo tube traverse speed. Now, the 5% increase to the firing range of your secondaries and 5% decrease in the dispersion of the secondary battery, it's nice, but it's, it's not really all that useful. You don't see that come up very often. The second one that I could see people making a case for is main battery mod 2 to help speed up the turrets. Quite honestly, this comes with a, you know, a penalty to your, your reload. And I don't think this ship is a good candidate for it because the reload is already 15 seconds long. We don't need to make it any longer. AA guns mod 2, this ship will never be in any aircraft cruiser. It's really not worth it. And again, secondaries, we just don't have enough secondaries to actually justify doing a secondary spec. In the third and final upgrade slot, I am once again running Propulsion Systems Mod 1 for the 20% reduction in your engine being incapacitated and a 20% reduction in the time it takes to repair them. Uh, there will be people who will run Steering Gears Mod 1 for the basically the same thing except for in steering instead of in the propulsion. And of these two, I personally find Propulsion Systems Mod 1 to be more useful because losing your engine in battle is a far bigger detriment than losing your rudder is, in my opinion. I'd rather be able to, you know, get away from ships at distance, which adds time, which can be quite useful in getting that rudder repaired, as opposed to being sitting there dead in the water with no propulsion. But hey, I can move my rudder. That's just me. To each their own. Personally, Propulsion Systems Mod 1 is the one I choose. Damage Control Systems Mod 1 is really not useful on Cruiser, so I definitely don't recommend it. All right, enough of me blabbing on about these stats. Let's go dive into a battle video. All right, so this battle is actually going to be a Tier 7 fight, and you will find that Tier 5 ships are going to be in more Tier 7 fights than they are going to be in Tier 5 or Tier 6 fights. And, well, you know, Furutaka is definitely no different than any other ones. Thankfully, though, you know, in terms of battleships, we're light on battleships, we're heavy on cruisers and destroyers. That means this match is going to be a fun one. The map is Two Brothers, and we have spawned all the way on the west side of the map. My usual tactics for this, especially in a cruiser, is at the beginning of this match until we can get some destroyers out in front is to go ahead and find a nice, solid island to put ourselves behind to avoid enemy incoming fire. Once we kind of figure out what the flow of the battle is going to be, then I tend to push a little bit harder, and you will see here we push quite hard. Now, one of the advantages to Furutaka, again, remember, she has 8-inch guns. She's the only Tier 5 cruiser that has that. But being in a Tier 7 fight, this is actually not a disadvantage because at Tier 7, there's a couple of heavy cruisers that are involved in this. Actually, all the nations pretty much have their heavy cruisers, the exception of the Royal Navy. And uh, what that means is we can be uh, pretty reliable at citadeling cruisers that expose a broadside profile. So definitely worth knowing, again, when and how to use various different shell types. This ship definitely rewards that the most, and if you're looking to learn those situations, I would highly encourage you to pick up this ship just for that purpose. And, well, at this at this tier, it's, it's a little bit more difficult, you know, in a tier 7 fight to pull that off, because you can't overmatch some of these cruisers. Bow, there's a good look at the torpedo arcs there for you. 
Uh, pretty good arcs there. I mean, you do have to expose a little bit of your side profile. If you're going to use those, I would definitely recommend angling yourself towards the ship that you're going to launch him or away from him and waiting for his uh, the indicator to move towards the ends. That way you can launch towards the ends and expose as little of a broadside as possible. So here we are. We're going to traverse our turrets off to the left-hand side here. Again, we found ourselves some big old islands to try and hide behind, but we're going to quickly come out of here and end up getting detected. Yep, there it is. And that is going to be by a destroyer that is in the cap. We are going to see him repeatedly throughout this. And one of the more frustrating aspects about this is the fact that this Omaha has the ability to shoot at me, but I don't have the ability to shoot at him. And then he starts to fire like a complete and utter jerk face. Well, we will uh, attempt to rectify this issue by returning our fire to him. Thankfully, he's not able to uh, land any more hits that cause any actual um, you know, damage. So now we're going to pop out on that other side of this and fire away. Well, we lost our rear turrets. Ooh, we got to continue to traverse this way because we've got ourselves some torpedoes incoming and Citadel for 5,100 damage. Uh, Omaha, yeah, so Omaha is a really easy cruiser to Citadel. It's massive. It's very easy to find. Yep, see, somebody else found it. <laughs> Launch a set of torpedoes there at the smoke in uh, hopes that we can get something else. There's another 3K in AP just taken off that Omaha. We definitely want to get one more salvo off, though, if we can get our damaging out salvo off. That would be awesome. Ooh, sorry there, Mr. Algieri. Sorry, Mr. Frenchy. Please don't eat that torpedo that... Aha! Yeah, I see he skilled that. Okay, so Sims. We've got ourselves a Sims. Ooh, Fujin. Okay, so we got a Fujin and a Sims over here. Both those guys were, you know, in their smoke, so to speak. Mr. Fujin was definitely trying to hurt us. So we're up here kind of all by our lonesomes, and we've got... Well, we're not up by our lonesomes. We've got a lot of support, but we're, we're up at the front. I don't want to call it tanking because that's not what we're really doing here, but sometimes sometimes it feels that way. Trying to make it over here to the Sakatsuki smoke because it's exceptionally useful. So we switch to AP because this Omaha is exposing a broadside, and that's a Padlin. And, oh, this looks hairy. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, yeah. Well... We're still going to eat one torpedo there. Yep, that's okay. It doesn't look like we even flooded there. It looks like everything was basically a uh, from damage. And Omaha going broadside. Yep, Citadel for the Padlin. Look, another broadside cruiser at this tier. Well, you briefly saw him there. We are up to 12,201 damage with a sink. We've still got ourselves two destroyers, to three destroyers now to deal with. And look at here, got ourselves a Nuremberg, Nuremberg, Berg, Nuremberg, yeah, that's the word, and still sitting broadside, and moving slowly, the joke's on him, I don't know if uh, one of the ships in my group here was radaring him or what, but we are going to finish him off, we are up to two kills. Got ourselves in New Mexico here that we definitely... Ah, uh, yeah, so the Indianapolis probably radared him. We definitely need to be cautious of this uh, New Mexico here. Pray that he shoots at something else aside from me. But you can see here we're playing the... I'm, I'm going to call it the kiting game. Because quite honestly, I don't want anything to do with being broadside. Yep, like that. But I guess... Ooh, hey! Managed to get ourselves a Fujin with our torpedoes. Well, isn't that funny? Well, it's funny for me. It's not funny for him. So we're up to three kills and only 28,000 damage. That means we've done a very good job of securing kills in this match so far. Uh, well, you know, it is what it is. So this Akatsuki here comes through with just an absolute clutch smoke. Uh, that that was definitely useful because uh, I, I got the distinct impression that if I can, continued on... It would be a bad day that New Mexico was going to definitely hurt. Look at that, 3,600 damage taken off from HE shell hits on that uh, Sims. And Minikaze, oops, sorry, Akatsuki. Minikaze, we got two shell hits for 2,100 damage. 
He's definitely feeling the heat here. Now, Mr. Algidi is definitely... Oh. <laughs> okay. The Cleveland decided he was going to take that. We're up to 37,000 damage. We got ourselves a dev strike. So somewhere in here, this game is going to get more interesting, right? Because all we seem to have done is do a bunch of loops back here and shoot at whatever targets seem to come up. Well, that's an accurate statement. In fact, that's pretty much how these ships get played. All of the Japanese cruisers get played. We have just enough what I'm going to call trollish armor to uh, to uh, to kind of tank. But as far as cruisers go and tanking damage, it's really not a good idea. And the Japanese cruisers are not an exception to this rule. Not at all. So we jump into the cap area real quick. Ooh, we got some torpedoes up ahead. Definitely want to avoid getting hit by those be nice if our cleveland would too it'd actually be nice if we would cap this yes there we go so we are shooting at the new mexico here trying to put to use that uh, massive fire chance and you can see here kind of trying to to wiggle and waggle as much as possible to make myself as little of a target as possible 4400 damage basically there to that New Mexico and just HE and that was that was pretty much straight pens there. Aha! We got ourselves a Sims that decided he was gonna pop up. Ooh, who's he shooting at? Cleveland? Ooh, we got a fire, 3,800 damage. Cleveland looks to have weathered that salvo pretty good. Now we're going to go ahead and shoot the New Mexico. We're gonna continue to engage the New Mexico here because I'm trying to get to that guy's smoke. Ooh, got ourselves another fire with a 2,500 damage damage roll. That was four hits. That was four penetrating hits, though, on the HE. I would have figured we would have gotten a little bit more than that, but guess not. Now trying to start the bow on fire. You can actually, and actually you have to. So uh, if you're looking to uh, start multiple fires on a ship, the key to that is knowing that there are four hitboxes, four fires to start. You got two in the middle, one at the bow and one at the stern. If you don't get those there, you definitely will not get those. Uh, you, you definitely will not get those additional fires. You have to actually land shells there and start fires there. We managed to duck into the smoke here, which definitely got rid of the heat off of us for a little bit. But what? Look, what's gonna pop up? It's a Sims. It's a nearly dead Sims, and we're up to seventy-three thousand damage. We got ourselves a dev strike. Maybe we can finish off this guy. I don't know. We definitely want to... Oh, 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 oh. Nope, we missed. We definitely want to not present too much of a broadside to him, because remember, U.S. Destroyer 5-inch AP is actually quite potent. Now, he's not using it. We definitely need to go on a what I'm going to call a varied path here, because there's his torpedoes. Look at this. Oh, oh, oh. Yes, torpedo beats. That's frustrating. Well, you know... It, 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 it's all good. Oh, okay, so he's turning. Now, you think he's going to turn back before those shells get there? Ah, no, we, we bracketed him. Okay, well. Oh, and he smokes up before I can actually get uh, anything out. Oh, he's got incoming shell fire. Can he? Yeah, so the war spite manages to kill the Sims. Now, you can see here from a battle standpoint... We know that they've got at least three cruisers and a destroyer. My guess is the destroyer, based on his last known, is going to be, along with possibly one of those light cruisers, the one of the Fijis. That leaves a Fiji and whatever the other one is, Alba, to be our problem children. Well, we're going to go over to sea anyway, because that's exactly where our next objective is. And there's really two options that we can go from there we can either go up the channel and try and get b back with some help or if things are going to go the way that they feel like they're going to go like they are right now we can just go ahead and cap b and then cap or uh, sorry cap c and then just keep on going to d which is actually what we're going to do with that in mind, there's only two locations at which enemy ships are going to come from. We've got ourselves a scout plane up, so hopefully that's going to do some spotting for us. We've got hydro if we feel like we're going to need it, although right now I definitely don't feel like we're going to need it. Ooh, and there goes B, so something is capping B. We've got ourselves a war spike that's headed up there. That, that would, that's a 
that's uh, the right move. That is definitely the right move. Albeit, albeit a gutsy one. A, a part of me really wishes the Sakatsuki or this Algiri would have gone up there to support him. But in the end, it all ends up working out just fine. So what I'm doing here is I'm lining up in anticipation that because we've started capping this area, capturing C, that they are going to come from B to C, which is what most people would do in this case. I can't spot them with my spotting plane, so who knows what their ETA to the area is. We're going to go ahead and we're going to dump a set of torpedoes down the channel anyway, just waiting for the indicator to line up so that all four of them can actually go down the channel. So there goes that. We've switched to AP, and this is important because they have cruisers that are left, and both of them are pretty light-skinned cruisers. The Fiji is going to be something that we can overmatch his front bow on. Oop, got the cap. 74,372 damage. That Alba is going to be a little bit more difficult to deal with. Okay, so there's one Fiji up there, so that definitely means the other one is somewhere over here. Deer spotting plane, please spot them. That would be fantastic right now. So I had an idea of what to expect going into this. Well, as soon as I say it, it happens. Well, that's good news. It'd be nice to get around this island. It'd be nice to see him. It'd be nice to be able to shoot at him. Yeah, so he's going to angle himself away the other way. That's perfectly fine by me. We're going to keep on charging over here. Now, in hindsight, I probably should have slowed down and waited for the French cruiser to come. You can see our Akatsuki is going to make a hard run towards B. Ooh, we're detected. Aha! Got ourselves an Alba coming in. And so now it's down to us versus him, and he's going to start off by presenting a really awesome broadside. I like that. Please accept my 6,000 damage. You can see here what I was talking about. We're going to charge at him. With our torpedo launchers, we're just gonna we're gonna use those two front guns as best we can. Oop! And there's a citadel and high caliber and all that. So we're gonna launch a set of torpedoes off that way. I don't know if he can see that. I don't really care at this point if he can see that. He's sailing broadside, and any distraction I can get him, the better. Oop, got an overpen. Definitely want to make sure we avoid his shells. But look at what we got over off on this other side. He's shooting HE at me, but we've got ourselves a predicament here with this Fiji. We definitely need to engage something and do some damage to something. <laughs> yes, very descriptive. 10 out of 10 would recommend, highly. <laughs> well, we managed to citadel him and we're up to 90 some odd thousand, uh, 99,800 and some odd damage. And look at that, 14,000 taken off of this Alba with citadel hits. If I had a repair, that would be fantastic, but I don't. And last salvo there we got, and we sink him. So 119,079 damage, a dev strike, a confederate, a high caliber. We've managed to take out a tier 7 ship in a tier 5, or sorry, a tier 6 ship in a tier 5 cruiser. We have a Fiji over here that's left and a Gremiashi. Now the Gremiashi is over there dealing with our war spite. The Sakatsuki is over here trying to cap B. Personally, he should be expecting the Fiji to rush him with the uh, hydro acoustics. If it were me and I were in his positions, I would have bailed out the backside as best I could. Tried to do some spotting for the Algeri as he comes around, but, you know, hey, he's doing what he thinks he can do best. He's got a good spot on the Fiji now, so get those torpedoes a-rolling. In fact, I actually think the Akatsuki's uh, torpedoes aren't quite up yet, which is explained why he waits so long to launch these torpedoes. But unfortunately, that means he's going to get spotted here fast. And he launches two sets, and then launches a third. Uh, nope, none of those are going to hit. The Fiji definitely saw that one coming. And a good dodge by the Fiji takes out our Akatsuki. Things are getting a little dicey, but we've definitely got the points lead here. We've got uh, two caps out of the four with a third that is three quarters of the way done. The Fiji has next to no hit points, just waiting for that war spite to poke it. Gremiashi here is uh, basically at no hit points. He's a little over a third of his hit point pool and waiting for the war spike to finish him or the Algeri to come around and finish him. Now we're up to three caps, 844 points to 660. The Fiji has smoked up in the cap. Now, 
I, I can't believe the Fiji didn't anticipate the Algieri coming around the bend, especially given that that cap was being capped. Maybe he didn't care. I don't know. Personally, um... I don't know, there's a number of different ways we could have played that, but the fact that he's still staying in that smoke says quite a lot to me. Like, where his hydro's obviously down, he burned it on the Akatsuki, and uh, definitely, definitely let everyone know that we just need to survive. And Mr. Fiji there is totally not paying attention at all. Like, 100% not paying attention. Bad position to be in. Algeri gets his torpedoes off. This could be interesting. He, he was waiting for the Fiji to shoot again. Although I think he probably could have launched those pretty much anywhere in that circle and probably would have gotten a hit. <laughs> I mean, not that Fiji is a particularly large ship, just as it stands right here, there's not a whole lot to uh, to, to miss. They, they're going down the the long way down there, so he's pretty much guaranteed to, to get himself a torpedo hit, and there it is. So down goes the Fiji, that leaves ourselves with the Gremiashi here, and we're going to most cap this out. Yep, so 999, and there's a thousand. So 119,000 damage. At tier 5 and a tier 7 match with 4 kills, Dev Strike, Confederate, High Caliber, 8,831 XP with a base XP of 2,871. Yeah, I would say that that was a carry. <laughs> Only 16,000 damage done in fires. Not a whole lot done elsewhere. And there's the credits and XP screen. Anyway, overall, Furutaka is not a bad ship to play through and grind through. The stock hole grind is definitely painful, but she gets better as she goes. And uh, she's not too bad at all. Anyway, I'm your peacekeeper. Like, comment, subscribe, and thank you for watching.